PTE Grammar Rules. English grammar is one of the most difficult and stressful subjects for many people and many students, as it has many confusing and complicated rules. However, grammar plays a very important role in the question types in PD exam, such as summary written text, essay writing, reading fill in the blank, reading and writing fill in the blanks, reorder paragraph, summarize spoken text, and of course, write from dictation. It took me four attempts, four attempts to finally get my desired score of 79 plus in all section. I bought and read so many grammar books when I prepared for my PTE examination, so you don't have to if you watch my video. I have made a video series of PTE grammar rules that you must know if you want to achieve your PTE target score. Currently, I have made 15 videos of grammar rules and continuing to be updated on my channel. So you might consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Each video consists of explanation and examples of each grammar rule to make sure that you will be able to apply these rules in your PD exam or not. I will make each video and explain each grammar rule in my own words so that it will be clear and very easy to understand. And of course, I will make each video as short and sweet as possible, straight to the point, no fluff, because I know that you don't have much time. In this unit, I'm going to explain you the preposition in, for, about, always, plus verb, ing, or gerund form. This is very useful and is very important for you to answer reading and writing fill in the blank or reading fill in the blank in PD Academy exam. So let's have a look together. Section A. If a preposition in, for, about, etc. is followed by a verb, that verb needs to end in ing form. For example, are you interested in working for us? You see, in preposition, the verb to work become working. I'm not good at learning languages. I'm not good at learning languages. We cannot use I'm not good at learn languages because it's followed by preposition at. Kate must be fed up with studying. Kate must be fed up with studying. With is a preposition, so to study becomes studying. Fed up means bored or unhappy. What are the advantages of having a car? To have a car becomes having a car. And then, thank you very much for inviting me to your party. I think we might familiar with thank you for doing something, right? We always use it. And then without realize that this is the grammar rule that after preposition for, we have to use verb int form. How about meeting for lunch tomorrow? When we ask a friend to go for lunch tomorrow, we can ask how about meeting? for lunch tomorrow. About is also a preposition. To meet become meeting. Why don't you go out instead of sitting at home all the time? We ask a friend, why don't you go out instead of, you know, sitting at home all the time? And then in spite of is also one of the preposition. We can use in spite of plus ing form. Amy went to work in spite of feeling ill. Even if she feels sick, she feels ill, she went to work. So in spite of plus verb ing. I hope you understand the section A. Now we move on to the next section B. We say before ing, after ing. For example, before going out, before going out, I phoned Sarah. Not before to go out, I phoned Sarah, you know, before plus ing. What did you do after leaving school? So after leaving school, before plus verb ing, after also plus verb ing as well. But you have another possibility to just simply use past simple tense. For example, you can also say for the first sentence, before I went out, before I went out, I phoned Sarah, you know, because it's in the past, we can use past tense as well, or you can use before plus going. 
And then the second one, you can say, what did you do after leaving school? Or you can just simply say, what did you do after you left school? Left is past simple tense. And then now by also followed by ing as well to say how something happens, to explain or to describe how something happens. For example, you can improve your English, you can improve your PTE score. How? By reading more. So by is to say how something happens, need to follow it with gerund or verb ing. She made herself ill. How? How she feels sick. How she made herself sick. By not eating properly. By not eating properly, she made herself ill. Many accidents are caused. How? By people driving so fast. By people driving too fast on the road. The burglars got into the house. How? How they got into the house and steal something. By breaking a window and climbing in. So they're breaking a window and they're climbing in the house and steal some stuff in the house. Now without it is also one of the preposition. That's why it needs to follow verb ing. We ran 10 kilometers without stopping. So we ran non-stop for 10 kilometers without stopping. It was a stupid thing to say. I said it without thinking. I said it without thinking. I haven't thought about it. I, it was a stupid thing that I said before. She needs to work without people disturbing her. So she needs to work without people disturbing her. Or we can say in a passive meaning, she needs to work without being disturbed. Being disturbed has a passive meaning. We can use being plus past participle as well in this case. And then the last example for without. I have enough problems of my own without having to worry about yours. So myself, I have too many problems. I have enough problems of my own without having to worry about yours or your problems. And then the last section, the section C, is very important. We normally understand that to always plus verb infinitive, right? We often use to plus infinitive, to do, to see, to go, something like this. For example, we decided to travel by train. We decided to do something. So travel is infinitive. Would you like to meet for lunch tomorrow? We ask a friend. Would you like to meet for lunch tomorrow? To plus infinitive. Everybody know this is 100%. We all understand this concept. But be careful. To is also considered as a preposition like in, for, about, or with, etc. For example, we went from Paris to Genoa. So in this case, to is a preposition to tell us we went from where to where. We went from Paris to Genoa. I prefer tea to coffee. So I, I love tea more than coffee. Are you looking forward to the weekend? Are you looking forward to? So in this case, to is a preposition of looking forward to. So if we use a preposition plus verb, I already told you in the section A and B that the verb ends in ing. We have to use gerund form or verb ing after preposition. Fed up with traveling by train. Fed up with traveling by, tra by train. Why traveling? Because with is a preposition. How about going away this weekend? Why going? Because preposition about. Now, take a note if you didn't know this concept. So, when to is a preposition and it is followed by a verb, what verbs we have to use? We have to use verb ing, not infinitive verb. I prefer driving to traveling by train. So, you see here, I prefer driving to traveling by train. To, in this case, is a preposition of verb prefer. You prefer something to something else. In this case, if you want to use verb after preposition to, I, you have to use verb ing. I prefer driving to traveling. The last example, 
Are you looking forward to going on holiday? Are you looking forward to going on holiday? Always remember that looking forward to plus verb ing. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. I'm looking forward to going on holidays. Something like this. So I hope that I was clear enough for this unit about preposition. Always you have to use verb ing. You know after preposition in on of something like this. So now let's practice some exercises to make sure that we all understand what we have just learned together. Let's start with number one. Complete the second sentence so that it means the same as the first. So let's see the example. The first one. Why is it useful to have a car? Why is it useful to have a car? The answer is. What are the advantages of having a car? So the second sentence here need to have the same meaning as the first one. So they ask like, why is it useful to have a car? You know, you use preposition of plus the gerund verb to have become having a car. So number two, I don't intend to apply for the job. I don't intend to apply for the job. So the same meaning can be I have no intention of, and then dash. So we have to use the verb to apply for the job. To apply become applying, applying for the job. That's it. I have no intention of applying for the job. And then number three. Ellen has a good memory for names. Ellen has a good memory for names. Become, Ellen is good at. Ellen is good at. We have to use the verb remember names. So remember become, because here preposition at. Remember become gerund. Remembering. Remembering names. Like this, and then you probably won't win. The lottery. You have little chance, and then we can make this sentence. You have little chance of. You have little chance of. We have to use the same verb to win. So to win become winning. Winning. The lottery. And then, did you get into trouble because you were late? Did you get into trouble because you were late? So we have to use verb to be late. Did you get into trouble for to be become being? Verb to be become being in gerund form, being late. And then number six, we didn't eat at home. We went to a restaurant instead. So we went to a restaurant instead of instead of. Plus ing, so it's become eating at home. Instead of eating at home, we went to a restaurant. And then seven, we got into the exhibition. We didn't have to queue, so we got into the exhibition without verb to have, without having to queue, without having to queue. Or the alternative, we can use without queuing. We can use without queuing. Q u e u i n g. So we can have either without having to queue or without queuing like this. And then the last one, number eight. Amy is ninety years old, but she is fit and healthy. So we can say. Amy is fit and healthy despite. Despite is also preposition. It need to followed、uh, with the verb ing or gerund form. Despite being ninety years old, we have to use verb to be to tell about the age. Being ninety years old. So that's it. That for the question number one. And then let's do exercise number two together. 
complete the sentences using by plus ing and then choose from these verbs in the box. We have borrow, drive, press, put and stand. The example, the burglars got into the house by breaking a window. You know, the burglar, someone who break into the house and then like try to steal some stuff. The burglars got into the house, how? By breaking a window. And then the question number two, I was able to reach the top shelf, how? On a chair. So I was able to reach the top shelf. So what, which verb we have to use for this second question? We have to use stand on a chair. We have to use by standing standing on a chair then number three you turn on the computer by dash the button at the back you turn on the computer by what uh, which verb we have to use here with the button the button we have to use the verb to press so it's become by pressing p-r-e-s-s-i-n-g pressing the button at the back of the computer Number four, Kevin got himself into financial trouble, too much money. So with the now money, we have to use verb borrow, right? We have to use to borrow too much money. By borrowing, B O double R O W I N G. By borrowing too much money, Kevin got himself into financial trouble. Then number five, you can put people's lives in danger too fast. So you can make people in danger by something too fast. Now we have verb to drive and to put. So they are talking about driving too fast can put people's lives in danger. So verb to drive a car become by driving. D R I V I N G driving too fast, and then of course the last one we have to use the verb to put. We made the room look nicer by putting some pictures on the walls. We make the room more beautiful, you know, look nicer by putting some pictures on the wall. By put P U T, you have to add one more T, so P U double T I N G. To put become by putting. Putting is the gerund form of verb put. So this is the two exercises that I think is can be very benefit, very helpful for us to better understand what we just learned about this unit. PTE Ultimate Guide to Score Seventy Nine Plus. It took me four consecutive attempts to get my desired score of 79 plus in all the four sections in order to apply for Australian Permanent Residency. I have been through the painful experience that I will never forget and I don't want you to experience it. With my painful and also wonderful experience after taking PTE exam for four times, I was able to create the PTE Ultimate Guide to score 79 plus. In this guide, I am going to share literally everything about PTE exam, all my secrets, some preparation steps, or tips and tricks that helped me crack the exam. I will be explaining each and every task in total 20 tasks in four sections with the marking criteria, the strategy, or the easy templates that I used in the real exam and things you need to be careful. You just need to read this guide and go implement it. This is the best thing that I can give to you. This guide is very in-depth packed with useful tips and tricks, and of course, it will help you to get your desired score as quickly as possible as soon as you take action. It's definitely worth your time, no fluff, straight to the point. The main reason I decided to create this guide for you is mainly because I think if we practice enough and smart, 
you don't deserve to take PT exam more than two attempts to get your desired score. I don't want you to waste your time, money, and energy again and again. If you want to download this guide, you just need to check the link down below in the video description box.